Hello, good evening. It's 10 p.m. here in Accra, and we're live from the News Hub at Adisawe Kanda. This is the last bulletin for the day, live on DSTV Channel 279 and also on our social media platforms on TV3. GH coming up uh, tonight on the big one. Ghana Integrity Initiative is calling on President Takufuado to reverse the new board chair position of the Ghana Revenue Authority GRA from uh, office until allegations of impropriety against him are cleared. I will interrogate this issue further. We have all of these plus a lot more coming up over the next 30 minutes. Please stay. Right, uh, let's. Uh, Right, uh, let's uh, do the highlights of the, today's major uh, news stories. And Accra High Court has uh, revoked the bill granted Gregory Afoko, accused of murder of the Upper East Regional Chairman of the New Patriotic Party, Al Haji Adams Muhammad, in 2015. Jurors are expected to be impaneled on July 17th, uh, adjourned date. Meanwhile, Amnesty International says it will continue to seek justice for Gregory Afoko despite the new High Court ruling. Country Director of Amnesty International, Robert Akoto Amwafo, in an interview with 3FM, expressed his appointment over having been kept in custody despite the earlier ruling. And security has been beefed up at Achim. Jampomeni and Himan in the Fantiaqua district of the eastern region following clashes between residents of the two communities over mining. The uh, town folks have been protesting the pollution of the Broom River and degrading of the environment by the uh, Dom uh, mining firm. A relative calm has returned at uh, Dagomba Line Goro, a suburb of Kumasi, after violent clashes claimed two lives last Thursday. However, some residents, particularly women and children, continue to flee the area for uh, security reasons. Those are our major news highlights. Remember, we're streaming live on Facebook and on 3news.com. Up next is the big one. Welcome back. Now, the Ghana Integrity Initiative is calling on President Takufuado to reverse the new board chair of the Ghana Revenue Authority, GRA, from office until allegations of impropriety against him are cleared. Uh, the Ghana Integrity Initiative says a public outcry against the appointment of Kwame Owusu, the former Director General of the Ghana Maritime Authority, to GRA in the face of abuse and conflict of uh, interest of his former office, does not all go well with the country. The anti-corruption body said in a press statement, the raging debates are focused on the integrity of Kwame Owusu and its implication to the public perception of the new institution he has been appointed to. The Ghana Integrity Initiative says the president swore to hold himself and appointees accountable to the people of Ghana and making information on his accountability available to the people whose mandate he uh, hold, helps to govern. On uh, Skype, uh, we're getting the co-chair of Citizens Movement. All right, uh, I beg your pardon, uh, let's uh, quickly get to the co-chair of the Citizens Ghana Movement Against Corruption, Adam Senanu. He's joining us on phone. Uh, Mr. Senanu, good evening. Thank you extremely for your time. So first of all, uh, do you think the appointment of Kwame Ousu was uh, a prudent one uh, decision, especially uh, looking at the call by the Ghana Integrity Initiative for his removal in, in, in relation to his previous position? Is this a good call? Well, let me say that I, I spoke to your colleagues yesterday, uh, also around the time, and I did indicate that I didn't think that this was an advisable decision, um, and, 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 and um, it was better that the president hold off on this. So, I am fully aligned with the GII statement that he should revoke um, and to such time as we are convinced that the gentleman has been cleared. Indeed, in the initial earlier interviews, he did not show a strong grasp of 
conflict of interest, let alone good corporate governance. So I think that it's in the interest of, of Ghana that the president holds off. But, but you know, uh, in, in, in the absence of this investigation, I mean, there is an ongoing investigation into that uh, conflict of interest uh, situation he found himself in. Whilst the investigations are ongoing and they are not complete, do you not think it's fair that if the president needs its service, he should be able to use his service until proven guilty? Well, I, that would have been something that one would consider to the extent that we do not have the kind of human resource in this country to chair a board like the GRAs. I think that there are several other competent and well-versed individuals who could hold that office, especially given the fact that there has been a lacuna there. I mean, it's not as if the position suddenly um, required somebody. It, it's been vacant for a while, um, and um, to the extent that the chairman was not too well and was not available. So I don't think there has been a rush. I think that there are several other very competent people who could hold that office. And given the background of Mr. Wusu, I think that it does not help all of us in terms of the fight against corruption that mm. this is happening at this time. And you made mention of the fact that the position was not available, raising questions of whether really uh, this government has the men at it, as it, it has been touting. I mean, uh, when we look at such a sensitive position, under, what really comes to your mind when you get the sense that, uh, pardon my use of the expression, it looks like he has to be uh, forced into a position to compensate for uh, the bad uh, conduct of himself in the previous position. Is this a good sign that this government is considering the best available human uh, resource for positions to, of uh, no, responsibility? It's, it's, really, it's, really, it's really not a good sign. It's a very troubling situation we find ourselves in because it suggests that there's a lack of respect for the sensibilities of Ghanaians. I mean, many people followed what transpired at the Ghana Maritime. Um, and there were several aspects of that, uh, of the incidents there that were not, you know, the kind of thing one would want to have in terms of people with integrity occupying positions and what they say and do. So given the fact that the um, MPP has so many people, individuals, who I am sure uh, from which they could find someone suitable, it, it really is, is, is troubling that this type of appointment would have to ma be made in the first place. So yes, yeah, your, your, your question is a valid one. Why do we have to be stuck with Mr. Kojo Uusu under these circumstances when there are several other people who could play this role? So what would you suggest to be the way forward? I know the nomination has been made. There have been calls to reverse it. Uh, but really, I mean, uh, nominating him does not give him the final approval into office anyway. So would you recommend that the president withdraws it outright or suspends it until such a time that the investigations have been conducted? Do we really need to engage in all of these? I think that the, for me, the ideal situation would be to withdraw it altogether. Um, yesterday, I, I talked about holding on, assuming that there is a report. Because if the report has not yet been completed, then it, it really is really very questionable that the mm. president would have made this nomination if the, the investigation is not complete. So the assumption would have been that, look, the investigation has been completed, there's yeah. a report that hopefully may have cleared him. But if that is not the case, then this should be revoked. So, so yeah. if, for example, he has been cleared, you would say that it's all right uh, for him to be nominated for another position, uh, despite all of the uh, skepticism that Ghanaians might have on the due diligence conducted in that investigation? No, I think that really what is happening is that we are giving the presidency the benefit of the doubt. Um, we, we are just saying, you know what, if you have that document or report, please provide it to the good people of this country so that we are all aligned and can say, well, the president knew what he was doing. But the likelihood is that um, that's not happened. Um, otherwise, this should be something that is of public sensitivity. Uh, we should all be aware that uh, this is what has happened. Um, I think in the best interest of all, all of us, the best would be to revoke, to withdraw, 
and find somebody else equally competent um, so that the fight against corruption is strengthened. I know that there have been, uh, there have been uh, questions raised about the uh, awareness, heightened awareness about the Ghanaian citizens in terms of the political engagement, uh, democratic discourses and all of that. We look at the example of the campaign mounted for the dropping of the chamber. Eventually, obviously, the chamber was dropped. There are those who say that Ghanaians are becoming more conscious and aware of what they deserve as, as a people. Uh, more than put themselves up to be used. Uh, sorry for that negative very, slant about uh, politicians. Um, Is that the yeah, case? Do you see that we're becoming more aware and conscious and uh, beginning to stand up for our rights more than we used to in the past, and this could be a good thing? Yes, I, I think that there is clear evidence that Ghanaians are becoming more vocal, more ready to stand up for what they believe in. It's just that the circumstances... Uh, leave a lot to be desired. I mean, if you have the young people around Adenta Shaman saying that, look, until you get this bit sorted out, you know, they're going to be on the streets. Um, or you have the Shaman situation. Um, and there are many more, more people calling out. I, I, there, there's a good part of it, but there's also the troubling part to the extent that it looks like many people are despairing about the political environment mm. and the fact that um, this is a frustration that the political um, parties are not delivering on the promise. And, and that's, that can be dangerous. That I mean, can be dangerous. But what, what should be the right solution for this? I, I think that our political actors ought to recognize that there's a sense in which um, Ghanaians especially are getting wary of the promises and the lack of delivery. Yeah. And when, when, when masses begin to mobilize, um, they are endangered. And so they need to act more speedily to deliver on um, the democratic promise and aspirations of the mm. people of this nation. Mm. Uh, and, and this is a very urgent call. If people are not paying attention, many more people are getting despondent, they're getting worried that, look, it doesn't look like this whole experiment of uh, democracy is working. And it's mainly because our political actors are not working hard enough and yeah. speedily enough to deliver what are the democratic gains that citizens ought to enjoy. All right, Mr. Senanu, uh, we're grateful for your time. Thank you very much uh, for joining us. Uh, Adam Senanu is co chair of the Citizens Movement Against Corruption. I'm Stephen Antti. This is News at 10, live from the News Hub at, at the Sawe Kanda, and we're streaming live on Facebook and on 3 newscom We have more news for you. Please stay. Welcome back. Now, the Chamber of Petroleum Consumers, Ghana COPEC, has lauded oil marketing companies which have compensated customers as a result of under-delivering. Executive Secretary of COPEC encouraged all the other OMCs cited in the Ghana Standard Authority audit report to also compensate their customers and ensure that their pumps are routinely checked. Last week saw two oil marketing companies, um, Goyle Goodness Energy, uh, roll out some customer promos uh, to give back a lot to these customers who patronize these stations, as had been mentioned earlier by the Standards Authority audits. Uh, it is quite encouraging. We are happy uh, that these stations now have departed from the norm where they only pay fines and that is the end of uh, whatever when these pumps sometimes do not read uh, the volumes they are supposed to read. Uh, we are quite hopeful that the other OMCs, Allied, uh, Glory Oil, Shell Total, uh, Frims, uh, would follow suit and roll out something, extend a hand to these consumers uh, so that they also feel part and parcel of these businesses. It shouldn't happen that when something goes wrong, uh, we only pay these fines and the people who patronize these stations will leave them. We are quite hopeful that uh, the others will roll out their promos uh, in this coming week.
families of the three kidnapped Takrade girls have made a passionate appeal to civil society groups, statesmen, as well as the diplomatic missions to intervene in efforts to find their missing relatives. At the news conference here at Accra, they expressed dismay at the turn of events, particularly the posture by government on the case. The first victim, Prisla Bintum, was kidnapped in August 2018, before the two others, Prisla Mantebia Kranchi and Rutlav Kwesen, followed in December last year. Matters relating to the rescue of the girls have sparked much controversy and aroused sympathy and sentiment amongst Ghanaians. The families at the news conference expressed desperation for news about their relatives. I personally went to second day to see the regional commander. Upon my arrival, I was notified he had traveled and that his second in command was around. I was made to see him. We had a lengthy discussion. That is barely two months now. And all that he could point out was to give us words of encouragement that they are working tirelessly to bring them, to rescue them. Yes, of course, we do believe that it's not an easy task. But our problem here is, as you asked, the police should coordinate with us. They should be telling us, giving us information but we hear nothing from them. In this case, had it not been for the fact that I went there myself, we wouldn't have gotten any information from them. Aside calling on statesmen and the diplomatic mission to intervene in the situation, they want the police to stop giving them false hope. The posture of the police is, is pushing us back from seeking further um, information from them. They said they've set up a liaison committee. The liaison committee doesn't collaborate. They don't tell us anything. We go there by ourselves and we, it's the same story. What is most shocking is how the Ghana Police Service and national security operatives were able to gather all arsenals to rescue the two missing Canadian nationals with the speed of light three weeks after they were reported missing. So we ask, why can't the same security agencies in the country use that use same bold speed to bring back our girls? The families plan to stage another demonstration on August 10th if nothing is heard from government. And the Accra High Court has revoked the bill granted Gregory Afoko, accused of the murder of the Upper East Regional Chairman of the MPP, Alhaji Adams Mahama, in 2015. Jurors are expected to be impaneled on July 17, the adjourned date. On March 14, 2019, another Accra High Court presided over by Justice George Boedi admitted Gregory Afoko to bail in a sum of 500,000 cities with two sureties, one of whom must be justified. That was after his lawyers had argued that their client deserved to be granted bail because the state was not ready to prosecute him. The lawyers based their argument on a nolly prosecutor filed by the Attorney General on January 28 to discontinue Afoko's trial after more than three years. The AG filed the nolly prosecutor after the arrest of Asabgi Alangdi, the other person alleged to have conspired with Afoko to allegedly commit the murder. At a hearing on Monday, another high court presided over by Justice Meli Ifua Wood, a justice of the Court of Appeal sitting in as additional high court judge, revoked the bill granted to Gregory Afoko. The court revoked the bill after upholding the arguments by the prosecutor, Chief State Attorney Marina Piopon, who argued that the circumstances under which Afoko was granted bail had changed. According to her, the other court granted Afoko bail on the basis that the state was not certain as to when to start prosecution. She further argued that there was the likelihood that Afoko would not appear before the court to stand trial if the bail was not rescinded. The late MPP Upper East Regional Chairman Alhaji Adam Mahama suffered severe bodily injuries after a substance suspected to be acid was allegedly poured on him in front of his house in Bogatanga in the Upper East Region on May 20, 2015. He later died from the injuries at the Bogatanga General Hospital. 
Meanwhile, Amnesty International says it will continue to seek justice for Gregory Afoko despite the new High Court ruling. Country Director of Amnesty International Ghana, uh, Robert Akotua Mwafo, in an interview with 3FM expressed his appointment over having been kept in custody despite the earlier ruling of bail. We received it at Amnesty International as a worrying news, especially when it comes to the issue of granting bail and the respect of human rights by our legal institutions and the very institutions put in place to respect, to ensure that they implement these rights that we are talking about. It was worrying to us. We think it's a very big problem that as a nation we need to look at all these systems from the judiciary to the police to even the Chief Justice, we need to everybody to look at this issue again because we believe that he had the right to be given the bail. We want to find out what happened within that period when he was supposed to be give, granted bail and why wasn't he given the opportunity to go home as the bail required. Who denied him access to his right as prescribed by law? From all the issues that are coming up and all the, 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 the matters that we've had, looking at the drama that happened in court when the IGP and the CID head were supposed to appear in court and they didn't, issues when they were supposed they were there and then later they weren't found, all this drama gives us a lot in, uh, to be concerned about, especially when it comes to the issue of ensuring that an individual who has been granted bail and has the right to be released was being held and these individuals knew about it and they didn't do anything about it whilst they were supposed to be the head of ensuring that we implement our legal processes which are in place. Our quest was to ensure that he is released on bail as prescribed by law and has, as has been granted to him by the court of, of competent jurisdiction. Now that they have put him back onto um, the case, we need to look at it and see how our advocacy strategy will ensure that every Ghanaian when granted bail, that nobody, including the police, and the judiciary and anybody would not hold them up even when they are given um, um, the granted bill by a court of competent jurisdiction. Right, so that's how we wrap up with News at 10. Thank you very much for your time on behalf of the crew. Good night. There is more news at 3news.com.